Hey there, I'm your host Lissoe, and this is part 6 of our equipment system series. In today's video, we'll be getting to equipping the items, and with that said, let's begin. Let's start by going into our content drawer, and we want to open up our wardrobe inventory. So let's go ahead and do that. In here, we want to get a reference to our wardrobe in order to get that active slot. So let's create a new variable called wb underscore wardrobe. And let's give it the type of wb underscore wardrobe, like so, object reference. And let's make it instance editable and exposed on spawn. And let's compile and save that. Next, let's go ahead and open up our wb underscore wardrobe. And if we go to the active slot in here, let's refresh this. We should have a new window up here now for our wardrobe inventory. So let's go ahead and do self like so. Plug it in, compile and save. Next, we want to head over to our content drawer and open up our wardrobe slot. Now in here, when we've clicked on this, we want to know that we've clicked on it and what item is there. So on event dispatchers, we'll create on item selected and whenever this button is pressed we'll call it and in here we want to add a parameter which will be our item id so name and it's called item id and let's call it just like that whatever we input here will be returned back to us so this is what we want compile and save next let's head back over to our wardrobe inventory and in here, we want to click on get equipment slots. Now at the very end here, after add child to wrap box, we want to get our wardrobe slot and do bind event on item selected. Plug this in here like so. And from this event pin, we want to create an event and we'll do create matching event and we'll call it on item selected. Now functions don't allow you to have events in here. So we'll copy it, delete it, Go into the event graph, paste it in here, go back to our equipment slots, select it here, and if we compile, we should be good. Now, event dispatchers require the events to have exactly the same pins. So, if for some reason it's not working for you, make sure you have the exact same pins here as your event dispatcher. Compile and save that. And in here, we'll design the logic on when the button is clicked. So, we wanna get our wardrobe here, we wanna get our active slot like that and then we want to do set the item id of that active slot to be this id there and at the very end what we need to do is we want to refresh our equipment slot in some way so we need to go back into our equipment slot uh, right there and on here i'll do a custom event called refresh slot and we'll plug it in there like so and we'll be coming back to this so give ourselves some room like that and that should be okay so compile and save uh, close it go back into our wardrobe inventory and do refresh slot like so okay and that's one part down compile and save again next let's head over to our wardrobe component so equipment system, PPC underscore wardrobe. And in here, we want to create a new function called equip item. Now in this uh, equip item, we want to add a few inputs. So we'll do two inputs. The first input, we want to be the equipment category. So equipment category, and you want this to be E underscore equipment category, like your enum. And for the second one, we want this to be our item ID and let's call it name like that. Um, we can compile and the next thing we want to do is we'll need a map and we need to populate this map. So these guys will be populating it. So create a new variable, call it your equipment list. We'll also be using this to save and load our equipment. So um, give this a type E underscore equipment category, turn it into a map and set the values to be your name. We can then get it and we'll do add like so. 
This goes there, and this goes there. And perfect. Then we want to grab our get item ID in here. And we want to do a get row. So get data table row. And plug in our data table right there. We want to break this open. And from here, then we want to know the mesh and the material. So everything else can go, but the mesh and the material stays. And we want to get a hold of our components somehow. So what we'll do is we'll get our hero. And from this hero, we'll get our get hair. And you'll have to scroll all the way down. And there it is, get hair. So for every single item you have or skeletal mesh you have, just do that. So I'll speed run this. Okay, and we have our eight items here. So select everything, right click, uh, go to, if it lets me, alignment and left align. Okay, it just sorts it out for us. And in here, we want to make an array from this like we did in our wardrobe. So let's add all the pins we need, eight pins, and drag them into our array. Once again, having this in order like uh, previously. Okay, from here, we can then do promote to variable and we'll call this our equipment slots. And we can set it after the row has been found. Okay. What we want to do then is get our equipment category variable that's here, this one there. And we'll convert this to a byte once again, integer. And this will get the index. We'll get a copy of this index, like so. And we will then set the skeletal mesh asset. And the new mesh is going to come from here into there. Let's do that. Now the material um, will also come from here. So we'll do set material like so. You want the index to stay at zero. So that's the first material. And the material that's going to go in there will be this guy here. That's that. Okay. So this is our equipment slot for now. Let's compile and save it. Let's then head back over to our equipment slot. So content drawer, UI, equipment slot. And where we did that refresh, in here, we want to grab a sequence. So if you don't have that, press S underscore left mouse. You'll get it there. And zero will go to our code there to refresh that stuff. But on one, we then want to equip our stuff. So get hero which is a reference to our player character. We'll then do get component by class, get our wardrobe component, make sure it's valid. And if it is valid, what we will do then is we will equip our item. So equip item like so, logging in our category. And of course, our item ID, like so. Let's compile and save that. Next, let's head over to our WB underscore wardrobe widget. And in here, we want to create a new function called get equipment. And in here, like we did previously, we want to get our player character. So either hero or get your player character. And we'll do get component by class, which will be our uh, wardrobe component once again. And from here, we'll do is valid. And if it is valid, we want to get our equipment list we made. That's the map that's being populated. And we then want to find um, the equipment category. So we want this to be here. Uh, we want three pins. We want one for the equipment category. 
which will be E underscore equipment category. Um, the second pin we want to be the da, 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 WB underscore equipped slot, which will be a reference to our WB underscore equipped slot. And at the very end, we want to have the item ID, which will be of type name. Compile that. And we want to check if this equipment list, that category is equal to this category here. So uh, get category, log it in. And if it is, if it found it, what we'll do then is with our equipment slot, get equipment slot. We'll do a set item ID. And in here, we'll do a select. So option one will go to the item ID that's in here. This guy there. Get item ID. And if it is not found, well, then we'll have the non-equipped, right? So option zero will go into here or the other way around. If it hasn't found it, or if it has found it, we'll have that. If it hasn't found, then we'll get the none. And the wild card here will be if this is equal to nothing, like so. So um, at the very end, then we'll do a refresh slot, like so. And let's run over this quickly. Uh, this should go there. So getting our component, checking if it's valid, getting our equipment list, finding that equipment we have. If we find it, we equip it. If we don't, we equip none. We then refresh that slot. Okay. I believe we are happy here. So let's compile and save this. And if we go to our event graph, we then want to set this after the bindings. So what we'll do is we'll grab our equipment. This should probably be called set equipment be better since we're setting it. So your equipment ID will come from here. So get a item or item ID will come from here. Your image will also come from here like that. And the equipment category will come from this index right here. So we'll do two bytes integer and connect that there and it will convert it for you. So just like that, this should work. Let's uh, compile and save and let's give this a quick test. So if we play the game, go in here and let's say we wanted some hair. Boom, we get some hair. We want a different color. It works very nice. Now you might notice pretty quickly. Um, can I close this? I can. So you might notice pretty quickly that if you try to equip a weapon, this is completely not what you want. It's it's just wrong. So uh, what we can do about that is if we go to our content drawer, you want to find that folder with the models you've imported. So we'll go to mannequin, character, we'll go to meshes, and you want to select the skeleton. In here, then, we want to find where we want to attach these items. Now, in here, I already have them uh, done up for me. So what we'll do is, let's say you wanted to add it to your uh, left hand, right? Right hand. So we'll do two, 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 lower arm. Nope. We'll do, where is this? There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, hand left. Okay, why not? We'll just do it there. So, for example, if you want it in your hand, you'd click on the hand, you'd uh, add a socket, you'd call the socket something like um, left, we'll do L underscore hand underscore weapon. And then what you would do is you'd right click on this and do add a preview asset, you'd get your weapon. And then, of course, you'd go ahead and place this weapon exactly how you want it, etc. So essentially, I did that for the weapon here, for the sword, and for the bow.
So that's the idea. We can then delete that. Once you have the setup, you want to go and open up your player character. So third person character, blueprints. In the viewport, you click on your melee weapon. You go into parent socket, click on this and select your melee weapon underscore socket. So this is the name of the socket you just made. Do that. Same for the ranged weapon. Do that. Compile everything, save. And boom. We have nothing because we don't have a save system yet. Okay. So if we want to equip this, you see now it gets equipped on our back and onto our side as it should. So with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed. In the next video, we'll be continuing with setting the stats of these items. With that said, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.